life is a fight. I look at fighting and I kind of relate fighting to all aspects of life. I look at it as no matter who we are, where we're at in our journey in martial arts, um, we're all facing a challenge or like I say, a fight. So you have to look at all those challenges as a fight or an opponent that you're training for. And each time you reach a goal, that is a victory in your fight for life, kind of, so to speak. My name is Dean Lacey. I am the owner and chief instructor of Dubuque Martial Arts Group, founded in 1990 here in Dubuque, Iowa. I wouldn't say I really had a career in, in uh, fighting. I had a short, uh, short but successful time in, in Muay Thai and kickboxing in my younger days. I've had fights in the ring, kickboxing and Muay Thai. I was a three-time three Thai boxing commission heavyweight champion. These memories come from my last quote-unquote uh, Muay Thai fight. I had told the promoter I was gonna be coming in heavy for that fight so he could find me a bigger opponent. The fight before I had fought at 182 pounds, I was gonna be about 190 pounds. So I get to the weigh-in, the venue, and I'm, I get weighed in and everything, and I see the promoter, and I say, hey, Mr. Latuli, how's it going, you know, and the small talk and whatnot. And, but before I had got on in there, I had noticed this big monster of a guy walking around the, the, the venue, and he was uh, just a giant. Who's fighting that big dude over there? And he just kind of laughed at me, and he goes, to you? And I said, what? He goes, well, you said you were coming in heavy. This guy was about 6'5", 6'6", 245 pounds. Uh, his name was John Pruitt. I, I refer to him as Godzilla. We fought and I uh, ended up defeating him with, uh, stopping him with leg kicks. Yeah, I was known for uh, my, my kicks. Uh, my fight name was Lethal Legs. We were sparring and one of my friends, Tim Fernandez from the Akai Training Hall, he was getting ready for the fight and I broke his arm with a kick felt terrible. You know, it was two weeks out, it was the last hard day. I forget who it was, but just said, damn man, your kicks are lethal. A lethal Lex Lisi was born at that, that moment. I have a good friend I met freshman year of high school named Tim Mosel and Pat Hayes, and we all kind of were into martial arts and different martial arts like Jeet Kune Do, Filipino Kali, Jun Fan martial arts, and Muay Thai. My friend Tim, when he had gone away to college, he uh, started like a martial arts club down at University of Northern Iowa. It just so happened that our Taekwondo instructor from this same gym that I'm in now was moving and wanted somebody to buy the gym or take it over. And none of the black belts at the time could, could do it or wanted to do it. Um, so he found one of his brown belts that took it over. But that guy was only going to teach two nights a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we're like thinking to ourselves, that place is empty three nights a week. So my friend Tim and I had an idea, you know, he had the club at University of Northern Iowa and why, and he came home almost every weekend. Why don't we see if we could sublease from this dude? I taught during the week, three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tim would come home on the weekend and teach on Saturdays. And at that time, it was Tim that owned the gym. It was the Academy of Eclectic Martial Arts. He came in one day and said, hey, you just want to take it over? And I said, okay. I went over uh, with the owner of the building, negotiated a lease, and changed the name to Dubuque Martial Arts Group. And that was 1990, and we're still here today in the same building. Our student base is a mix. I've got Class A fighters, a few Class B, which is kind of the intermediate level, Class C fighters. And then I got people that have no desire to fight, that just uh, use martial arts for other aspects and, and benefits of martial arts training. So you have very beginners all the way up to pro athletes. My son, uh, Luke, started martial arts uh, when he was like four and a half. And I used to have a rule, they had to be five years old before they could start my kids class. But his older sister, Savannah, uh, is a year and eight days older than him and she was already doing kids class and he would come and sit around and do stuff off to the side and throw him kicks and punches and beg me to come and do the class when he was about eight uh, is when 
I, he started learning to fight, uh, kickboxing and Muay Thai, training with our competition team. So his first fight, I think he was uh, eight and a half. And that was his first fight and I've been training him, you know, pretty much his whole life. Uh, he's 26 now. What it means to me to pass the torch on to my son is that a lot of times we'll be thinking the same thing. So I, I like to think that he would uh, carry on the tradition um, and the system that I've developed over the years. It's a pride in our family name. So to carry that on and getting a little older, I, 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 I am going to keep kicking as long as I can. But but it's good to know he's helped coach. It's been pretty cool watching you know him develop over the years. What Muay Thai means to me is a little different than what most people probably experience. I've been doing Muay Thai my entire life. It's kind of how I identify myself in basically all aspects of life. I see it through a lens of Muay Thai and fighting. I kind of relate everything to back to like a fighting mindset. For me, it's just so important because I'm able to just express myself like in the purest form because it's been, it's what I've been doing since I was four years old. It's literally just part of how I've developed and it's part of me and it's like, it's literally just what I do. It's part of my existence. So I've been fighting since I was eight years old. I've managed to rack up over 60 fights, seven fights pro. I'm 26 and I've become recently a world champion at 155 pounds. Right now I'm ranked number one as a lightweight Muay Thai fighter. My professional record is seven and all with five knockouts. I was doing this tournament and I was teeping people, doing a foot jab to people's face, which is like not even something I was doing in practice. It was all of a sudden, I was just kicking people in the face. And then my buddy Jack over here was like, dude, you've been serving those teeps up. You're the freaking chef. And then boom, all of a sudden, I was named Luke the Chef Lisi. My name's Luke the Chef Lisi. I'm a professional Muay Thai fighter from Dubuque, Iowa. My most memorable fight in my long career is honestly, probably my last fight. My last fight was my toughest fight. It was uh, for the world championship at lightweight. I went against this Mexican champion, tough, iron heart, and he didn't give up. And I was in an elbow war with him and it was the first time ever getting cut. My dad was in the corner with me. It was like a fifth round comeback. So it was like an even fight between me and this guy. And um, we both wanted to win the world championship, right? And then it was the fifth round. And my, I remember my dad was uh, poking me in the chest. He was like, you're a fucking leashy. Remember this shit, you're a fucking leashy. And that's, that's our last name. And then I went on the last round and I finished him with 30 seconds left in the fight. Oh this goodness. one last minute here in the final round. Here goes Lisi oh. throwing. You see the sweat and blood the flying elbow. from my guy on. Lisi is just oh, oh, this army. Oh, 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 he's barely, he's out on his feet. That's the end oh. of the fight, guys. I just want to do Muay Thai and share my knowledge and, um, you know, live the legacy that my dad has started and, you know, just teach people our ways here in Iowa. And I just want to keep doing Muay Thai as long as I can. I want to make some money doing it. I want to support my family. And I want to keep getting these highlights and knocking people out and becoming known as the best fighter. But the number one thing I want is I want people to be inspired by me.